Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm going to give it a bit of a, a bearish outlook today um, and one based on Bitcoin's chart and Euro and Dixie and oil and all these other things. So uh, I'm gone over the weekend um, but I've left uh, several videos that are going to be released throughout the uh, throughout the weekend and they're long-term projections and ways to deal with and plan for the next bull market which I still strongly feel is going to be the case. Uh, preparations should be made for anybody who wants to take part in, uh, in a bull market Market and getting in at the bottom, uh, trying to time the market as best as possible for an investment perspective is always going to be the best. So the, these these videos coming out this weekend should should help you choose your platform, choose your um, you know what it is you're going to do. And I'm not so, I'm not laying out what coins to buy, but there's certain ways that you want to think about dealing with the bull market. So it's a particularly bullish weekend when it comes to my videos. But let's let's uh, let's start this Friday, unfortunately, with a bit of a bearish outlook, okay? Uh, because you have to really when you're talking long term time frames nothing's as simple as the way that we trade on a daily basis we wake up we check the trading environment we look for signals we play them we trade them we exit the trades usually within a few days for a few weeks and make some money but when you're looking at you know a long way down the line obviously it's not quite as clear and you have to think about all scenarios so before I go any further, join the Patreon. We're doing a Patreon live stream tonight. Uh, links in the description below. Right, so we'll start with Bitcoin. So this is, like I say, I'm going to think about this in a bearish uh, light. So this is Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin on a log scale, so we can see the uh, the absolute tear up that it's been in for base basically 10 to 12 years. And we've had um, a bearish divergence on the monthly. We've spoken about this in the past. Each peak uh, having bearish divergence that would normally lead to something different taking place as we uh, get the third drive, which would mean probably probably a, a deeper consolidation. Now I make the case that we're already seeing that deeper consolidation. If we turn these indicators on, we can see that we're breaking down below the 20 uh, weekly moving average, something we've never done before. We've poked our head a little bit further uh, down there, but we've basically reaccumulated on the 20 weekly at the end of a bear market. Now we saw the same sort of thing taking place, I would say here on the bull market, which is something that we'd never really closed below in a bull market. So it is a different, um, the, 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 the chart has been different throughout this bull market so this bear market could also be different too well it certainly is different this uh, well, green 50 exponential on the weekly uh, historically in a bull market had never been closed below but each year we spent a little bit of time below it and um, so it's definitely been different but we can make the case that the bear market looks different also is that the three drives of bearish divergence on the weekly on the monthly sorry playing out maybe it is maybe it is um, where's the low though that's that's the question right i made a video a few days ago speculating that the low has a very good chance of bottoming around fourteen thousand five hundred or so however if that were to break down for whatever reason then serious lows can be formed and we spoke about this in a video maybe a few weeks ago uh, where you know we could seriously entertain all the way back down to square one or maybe lower so like for clickbait value three thousand dollars a bitcoin uh, but yeah i mean anything is technically possible from you know like i say a, a broader economic environment which is not looking particularly good so we all know that the dixie's been on a bit of a tear up we were talking about how this yeah the, the dixie the dollar index basically was going to be bullish throughout all of this year. We talked about that last September, pretty much called it in September, said it's going to happen. Uh, but to see it tear up to such a large extent is, uh, is still pretty impressive. Uh, but the more it happens, um, it's almost like a snowballing effect. It, the, the more it gathers momentum, uh, the stronger it gets and the, and the bigger the move. So we could uh, we could really look at this channel here that we're in uh, to, to be retested and, and maybe even break out from here. I mean, the, uh, uh, ascending channels like this do have a habit of breaking down. <laughs> Uh, but thus far, it's not broken down. But uh, we could be looking for a rejection around the. Well, it depends when we get there. But yeah, the the the, the 116, 117, maybe that's what this channel would suggest. Um, and then maybe back down, you know, below 100 over a few year period. Though, look, this is a monthly, so we're talking about you know maybe the rest of this year into next year, marching on through up to these levels, and then at best, if you can, you know, if you can hope for the best, you know, back down to the uh, to you know to the to the mid 90s around 2025 which would mark i suppose the next bull market top for bitcoin i mean that's all a cyclical event now, yeah that, that's that would make sense but yeah we're speculating over years here aren't we as to what's going on so you can understand that, um you know how yeah, this is kind of difficult to do and it's all very much extremely speculative now <clears throat> 
One thing I need to show you though is that this is uh, this is your euro on the monthly as well. So this shows you how wrecked the euro is and how wrecked it's been for a very long time. It reached its peak over here. This is back all the way in 2008 and it's been going down ever since. Euro weakness. Uh, we've uh, just broken down, let's not say just, but this month broken down below one dollar. So it's worth less than a dollar now. We look at the pound. It's also having the same kind of trajectory. The pound is doing more or less the same thing. And you know the pound hasn't been this weak since uh, good old Brexit. Uh, the, the Bre when Brexit came kicked in that's the last time we saw such a, a significant um, uh, pullback on this one but there's been a variety of reasons why the dollar is just getting weaker and weaker and weaker versus its um, its American cousin over here I mean you know, back in the glory days in 1972 two, $2.65 those were the days uh, but uh, but since then it's just been going down so this it's just I'm just putting it to you that the, the, the dollar is on a tear up, and the, and uh, for the moment, the dollar, the, the the tear up being felt by the dollar, is only going to be pumped higher due to weakness across Europe. Um, so the, the 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 Dixie, for those who didn't know, the Dixie is basically a bag of other currencies. Uh, so you can look at forex, you can look at something like euro and 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 pound to the U.S. dollar, uh, and and see the trajectory that they're going, and recognize the trajectory that uh, the Dixie's going. And for those who think that this is going to stop around here, just because it's a you know a, a you know equal um, equal value. That's that's the shitcoin and you speak in there. Uh, that's not really how it works. Uh, what we see is a continuation of a downtrend here and a speeding up of a downtrend. For what reason? Well, for geopolitical reasons. The sanctions that have taken place with Russia have almost equal measure of, of, um, of consequence to the people who are placing the sanctions. So basically Russia and Europe have economic ties, you know, and uh, and it's come back to bite Europe as, as completely as expected. The only way, the only way that we'll see a reversal in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the euro or in the pound a significant reversal would be either the lifting of sanctions, which seems highly unlikely, um, highly unlikely, or some really radical uh, monetary policies from the ECB and Bank of England, which again is pretty unlikely that they're going to be able to uh, outpace the you know the Federal Reserve uh, in, in their in in you know in the way that they're going to tackle inflation. It just seems unlikely because their economies are smaller, they're weaker, they're already uh, they're already feeling the burn of these sanctions. America is in 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 many ways insulated against those sanctions. You, you know they've got their own economy, they've got their own stuff going on and and they, they don't feel the wrath of the sanctions like Europe do so uh, this is just probably going to get worse and uh, you know for those who who, who uh, think it's not possible uh, you know something like the euro could be down you know this time next year we could we could be seeing another 50 percent drop on the euro you think that that's mad but it really is not mad at all I mean that that is not unlikely like I say the situation that is allowing for this to take place this is a descending chart anyway this is constantly going down lower lows lower highs all the way down since what 2000. Well, maybe not 2000 since two, two, since 2008 so all the way down consistently all the time and now it's picking up pace because of geopolitical events their own sanctions cut your nose off to spite your face now i'm not here to give any kind of political standpoint or anything i'm just letting you know the reaction of those uh, of those politics um on the on the chart and until something changes this is going to is going to continue this way and pick up pace because the the deeper it drops the worse it gets it's like a it's like a snowball effect you know um it, it's, it's only going to get worse so to to look at the euro and the pound unfortunately i think the pound if if, if we carry on with this direction with the same sort of monetary policy with the same kind of sanctions and the, there's, there's no reason for the pound to stay above parity do you know what i mean parity <laughs> it's gonna stay it's gonna go below a dollar if we carry on like this which is only gonna add fuel to the old dixie fire and so yeah we can look at dixie and go all right so this is controlled by you know the, the, by um federal reserve but it's also uh, controlled very much by the ecb and um, and the Bank of England and whoever else is part of this currency bag of Dixie. So it's not so much a, a measure, well, I mean, it is a measure of dollar strength. It's also a measure of international currency weakness. Um, and so we should recognize that. So when we know, we all know that when the dollar, you know, the Dixie goes up, it's bad for stocks or whatever. But uh, there's more to it than that. You know, it might not necessarily mean that everything else goes down, but it, it does, it does 
lend more uh, more of an argument to the giant the giant move that could take place with the Dixie, which is obviously a very big one. You might have seen people do this uh, and go, this is what's going to happen with the Dixie because it's broken out and that's the measured move. Well, I mean, it could happen given what I've said. If we have a euro that's worth like 50 cents and a, and a pound which is worth, you know, worth less than a dollar, um, you know, those two may take up an enormous part, the majority of the Dixie uh, anyway. And so when you see it, when you think about that move, so that's another 50% drop for euro. We could, uh, let's just assume another 50% drop for the pound. Then yeah, something like that is probably going to happen. So what does that mean for everything else in the world? Well, it means that probably dollars will be your best best thing for you to hold, you know? Uh, dollars, tether <laughs> is technically dollars. But then uh, if you're thinking about holding tether for long term, then you've got to hold your trust in tether uh, and that something bad's not going to happen to tether. Anyway, so I've talked about oil in the past. That's fine. But there is a chance that oil does a massive breakout. And, and you know, because of all the same reasons that we're talking about with euro, and uh, sanctions and Russia and all this lots, yeah, that will that that could effectively cause, you know, an enormous move for oil into the you know 150, and then it's only another 100 percent from there. You back you're up to 300. I know that um, Goldman Sachs have predicted uh, something quite as uh, shocking as that if oil were to be weaponized. But why wouldn't it be? Do you know what I mean? Why wouldn't it be? It seems as though Russia are playing the cards they're dealt, and those cards basically lean on the back of energy. So why wouldn't they? Why would why wouldn't they do that? I mean, it looks as though uh, Europe are getting screwed hard from the sanctions imposed and what is likely to be some kind of energy embargo of some form uh, that's, that's going to either hurt them more um, or. Well, it just does not look good anyway. So so it's a bit of a bearish outlook on everything. Like I say, it's a very early morning for me. And uh, and this is a quite a large topic to try and cover. But all I'm saying is the euro is screwed. Uh, the pound is screwed um, until we see changes in uh, monetary policy from, from those two major components of the Dixie. So the Dixie is going to go up. We all know that it has a negative impact, impact on anything that's traded against the dollar. The bit, Bitcoin has got bearish divergence on the monthly, which again is uh, is, is not a good look for it. Uh, and uh, oil, you know, technically has a projection of much higher than where it is right now. And it's all very much interconnected. So as you all know, I've taken uh, I've taken time out from trading this month. Like, uh, most things are sold, apart from my overall hodl bags. But uh, so when it comes to trading, I'm uh, I'm sitting on the sidelines. I'm just going to chill for a bit. I'm going to obviously clearly monitor the market, looking for bottoms, waiting for those bottoms, and and, and blah blah blah. And like I say, I've got these videos coming out over this week, which are particularly bullish on the long term as well. And there's reasons to be bullish, but there's also this, all of this that I've just tried to explain in a, in a really sort of uh, higgledy piggledy way that needs to be thought about uh, protection for you and your loved ones and, and it would not likely be the best uh, form in in euros or even pounds you know what i mean and i love my pound trust me i love my pound but looking at the state of it it's hard to love something like that you know it's hard to love something like that uh, same with the euro they're both in the same bag really there's not a great deal of difference the pound is ever so slightly stronger than the euro but that's like winning the tallest dwarf award do you know what i mean so let's uh, let's Let's try and think about you know things outside of trade uh, trading at the moment while we're taking time. Well, while I'm taking time off from trading, and think about the broader economy and try and plan for what could be a serious winter and maybe a, uh, an even worse next year, really, and the effects that that could have on the stock market and crypto are yet to be decided. Right, I'm going to leave with you there. I've got stuff to do. I hope you have a nice day. Feel free to join me on the Patreon tonight. Otherwise, have a nice day, good weekend, and uh, take it easy.